since we met you people 500 years ago, look at us. We've given everything. You are still taking. It's true. Africa, our cocoa, our timber, our gold, our diamonds, our platinum, our whatever. Everything you are is us. I am not saying it, it's a fact. And, and in, in return for all of this, what have we got? Nothing. Anti-personnel indoctrination against ourselves. If you go and cook your horrible diseases like AIDS, you say it is us. You brought us tuberculosis. We didn't have this big cough until white people came here. In exchange for, in exchange for Africa giving Europe 500 solid years of our people, I mean, not Europe, the Western world, of our human beings to work your canes, to dig your gold, to take in gold itself, diamond, I mean, you know, fish, peanuts, palm oil, everything. In exchange for that, we have got nothing. Nothing. And you know it. Nothing. And you look upon, you know, white folks look upon us like monkeys. It is true. It's in your literature. Hey, you know, some of your best thinkers have said this about us. Have you heard of the, I mean, all these Germans? Have you heard? Okay. Yes. <clears throat> they said, Lord Burton, yes. people like that, they said, we, we, we don't even have the brain of, of animals. That's what we've got from you people. But don't you think that this is over now? Over where? Is it over? Who said that AIDS came from the green monkey? Is it over? Is it over? Well, if this is your impression, do you think that you can ever forgive us? It's not a question of forgiveness. I have nothing against you. My point is that you did and you are doing for your survival what is necessary. We can't blame you for that. The fact that we are not, we didn't do enough for our own survival and we are still not doing enough for your survi our survival that is not your problem you know even the even everybody that god has created has a sense of survival you know and until we if we don't develop it we can't blame white people you came here because you needed these things you took gunpowder from the chinese you needed them to shoot people do you consider AIDS as a new form of colonization? Of course. Why? That's why. <laughs> you know, my people, the Akans, we have a proverb. It says that good morning, thank you, is never enough to sort anybody's food forever. You cannot build your life on thank you, thank you, thank you, morning, thank you, English, thank you, God, you know, which is what aid makes, you know, we are always receiving, receiving, receiving. Nobody, look, and I'm, I, I don't care who hears, nobody anywhere in this world is going to send you their best of anything. Do you see? Neither the experts nor the, what I mean, people, you give us what you can afford. Aid is the leftover, really, and it cannot be enough. What I mean, aid, you can, when, you know, the world is, uh, now the world is one place. So, there is nothing wrong if my house is in a crisis and you offered me something. There's nothing wrong, you know, because there is interrelationship. But a whole nation, a whole continent cannot live forever on aid. And I think aid is, in, we are in Africa, we are in danger of making foreign aid. 
a kind of policy that is wrong. It, I mean, I think that we, you know, it humiliates our people. The people in the villages have not asked anybody to go around begging on their behalf. Well, I'm being a writer, really. Ah, it is crazy. I mean, it is a very self-consuming kind of activity. You know, it. You sit in a room, ba 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 ba. You write, and you think that other people outside want to hear it. I mean, the tensions of, you know, writing a book, it's tense. When you finish writing the book, you are tense because you wonder uh, how will the publishers and editors react to a book, to a story. Uh, even when it's published, you wonder, why are they saying that my books are selling in Ghana, in Nigeria, in Sierra Leone, Botswana, Lesotho, even South Africa? Uh, Kenya, and, and I'm so, so poor. So all of these issues are part of the horror, real horror, of being a woman, a writer, an African. But you don't stop writing because of any of them. You just go on. Life is like that. And I remember when he was giving his speech, he said, and I've quoted this all over, all the time, that... You know, people might ask him why there were so many girls, almost as many girls as there were boys, including his own daughter. So then he quoted a famous statement by a famous Ghanaian called Agri of Africa. And he said, when you educate a man, you educate an individual. When you educate a woman, you educate a nation. And I genuinely think that this kind of orientation has been part of my own outlook on, on the world, in the sense that I had, right from the beginning, uh, we, we are not Islamic, you know, we, our, the Akans, most of us are not. So that it is only later, you know, when I came to even places like the university, where suddenly, you are confronting, confronting things like, um, you know, the you know the negative attitude to women. Nobody told me when I was growing up that you can't do this because you are a woman. You can't do that because no, it didn't exist in my background. Yeah, because there is a, a policy of the American government. It's called the Kissinger Report which was produced in the mid-70s when Henry Kissinger was, the, um, was involved with the government. And it explicitly states, which to this day, it remains the official policy of the American government. It has not changed. Mm -hmm. It may not be implemented by mm -hmm. Trump, but it remains the same. That uh, the purpose of the foreign policy in Africa was to uh, reduce the, the population. So to give aid to countries in Africa, not uh, clean water and schooling and things like that, but uh, contraception and abortion, in order to shrink the population of Africa because they have great mineral resources there. That sounds diabolical. It I mean, is, I, I, yes. That sounds like something conceived in the mind of Margaret Sanger. Yeah, definitely. And so the, uh, at the time, Kissinger and those involved with the Carter administration wanted to shrink the population, make sure that the Africans do not develop and do not use the resources for themselves. Because we, in the States, we need them. There is a, a concerted effort of foreign powers to uh, control the population of Africa. Africa is a huge continent. It could, mm. could feed thousands of more people, but the uh, policies of the West, especially in, in Europe. For example... Between 1990 and the year 2000, the United States, Canada, and Europe contributed about $6 billion in contraceptives, not to help the people, not to give clean water, clean food. Uh, mm -hmm. That is uh, not, not to fight malaria, for example. No, of course, to perish the thought, never. Yeah. Let them die. That's the whole idea. So in our work in HLI, we denounce this reality to make the Africans aware that they have to defend themselves against the, the influence 
of foreign powers. Is it is it just the United States, or do you believe that China is also playing a role um, in in jockeying for the resources of Africa? China is playing a major role because China is buying property in Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in Mozambique, which is a Portuguese-speaking uh, language country, they uh, when Portugal was in charge of Mozambique, they used to export rice. Now they are importing rice from China mm. because they cannot produce. The, the socialism has wrecked the, the production of, of rice. And the Chinese come and buy farms. So about uh, almost a third of Mozambique belongs to China. So uh, I was in other countries of mm. Africa, the same reality in okay. South Africa. The Chinese are buying property, buying land in Africa. So and they, they send their own workers, the Chinese workers. They don't employ people over the place. They have sent their own workers to populate and to live.